Hey guys, it's John P with GeekBeat. This is part of our continuing series on the Lincoln Electric Power MIG Dual. Right now, we're going to talk about some of the accessories and the safety equipment and consumables and things that are really required that go along with the use of that welder. So if you haven't seen all the other stuff about it, head on over to geekbeat.tv and do a search for Power MIG. You'll see the entire series. We've got a step-by-step -step on how to set it up straight out of the box uh, to get you started welding. So let's take a look at some of the other stuff. Okay, first of all, this is the Power MIG that we just went through and set up but you will notice we've done something very different. I have it on a Lincoln Electric cart. This is important because as you can imagine, this thing is heavy by itself. It weighs probably 50 to 60 pounds, and that's without having all the cables and plugs attached to it. it makes it a little bit difficult to carry around, but if you're gonna attach a, uh, a tank to it and actually do MIG welding, now it's impossible to move easily. So you've got to have a cart. Now this one costs a little over a hundred bucks. I've got links to all of this stuff on the website, on the blog post, which we'll put in the links in the comments. Um, the cart's okay. I, I'm not in love with this cart. There's actually a different cart on Amazon that I'll give you a link to that's uh, cheaper and I think a little better. But this one will definitely work I just kind of prefer the other one. So you need a cart, it'll let you store your stuff on the bottom, a, pl a place to hold the tank, a place to hold this, and it rolls very easily. So that's important. Now, as we are welding, we're gonna be burning through material. The whole process of welding is taking two pieces of metal and then filling in the gap with more metal. And that's where these rolls of material come from. So this particular one is a flux cord wire, 0.035. The thing that you need to keep in mind is, as I was saying in our previous videos, you have to go through a specific setup process to use the flux core, and you need to pay particular attention to the size you're buying. This is 0.035. They also have 0.025, 0.045, and when you change the size of your wire, you have to change the size of some of the components in the welder. So keep all that in mind. You can buy the small little uh, rolls or step it up to the bigger eight inch rolls. These are like 10 pounds plus. Now this one, this is a little super secret trick for you guys. If you take a look, this is called silicon bronze. MIG wire. This stuff is beautiful. If you ever want to weld your two pieces of metal together and have a different color welded seam, which is great for artistic stuff, get you some of this. It's not cheap though. Okay, as we are doing all of that stuff, one of the things that's going to happen is our torch, our gun here, the tips are going to wear out. It's normal. It's a consumable item. So here's how we deal with that. First of all, we are going to remove this piece. This is called the nozzle. By the way, uh, when you are using flux core, you don't use this particular nozzle. You use this nozzle. It's, you'll see it's much smaller, and it's because it doesn't need shielding gas to come out, so we just stick that on there. But the other thing that we'll see here, which is even more critical, is this little contact tip. Now this has a tiny hole in it and it's what that wire feeds through and conducts the electricity into the wire to make it all work. These tips wear out. It takes a while but they do wear out so when they do we just grab a hold of it with our little pliers. This is another item on the list. I'll talk about this in a second but we'll grab a hold of that. We'll just loosen it up, unscrew it, and replace it. Now one thing too I forgot to do, the only thing I forgot to do when we went through our little uh, MIG setup was I didn't change the tip. We were using .025 wire, but guess what? The tip that it came with, it's hard to see, but right there it's .035. So we're going to rectify that right now and we're going to put a .025. You just stick the wire kind of through there, shove it on in, it's really tight because it's a contact tip, it should be tight. So we'll tighten it up like that, and then give it one little, not too much, 
but just a little extra, you know, make sure it's tight there. We will put our shielding gas nozzle back on. And now this is all set up for MIG and it's ready to go. So those little contact tips cost a couple bucks a piece. You'll, uh, you'll wear them out, although they gave you three of each of those two sizes to start with. You also have some other pieces that really are not consumables, but you can buy them additional sizes for those uh, rollers that we went over in the video. Now, when we're welding, let's say we want to weld this piece of material. One really important thing is we open up the side of our welder and we have this beautiful chart that tells us what the setting should be for speed and power on the front. But it's all based on the type of material and the thickness. You can't set it up if you don't know the thickness. So what we can do is use one of two different tools. They make these little ring kind of circular sizers and they have all these gaps and what we'll do is we'll take it and we will slide it over the edge of the material until we get the one it just fits in and then we know oh, that's it this is 0 0.070 thickness or if we turn to the other side it's 15 gauge so now we could go back and we could set it up on that chart if you want something that will work on different types of material, you could also get some of these digital calipers and then just measure it the same way. It'll give you a digital reading. Uh, they're both pretty cheap. Okay. Uh, as we continue on through, we are going to, let's, let's look at the pliers really quick because these pliers are important. They're, they're welding pliers for a reason. If you notice when I was messing with that nozzle, there's a little round part right here that my finger's sticking through. That's perfect for grabbing the nozzles, uh, the contact points to, uh, to remove the, the contact points. Then also there's the wire cutters right here, which are, which are recessed so that we can stick the torch tip right up to it, snip it, and have just the right amount of material sticking out. And then these needle nose pieces here are good for all kinds of stuff you're going to grab a hold of. But let me show you one bad thing about this pair I have. This is a cheap Chinese knockoff pair, but I want you to watch what happens. You see at the end, they, they move around. That's because they're cheap, and that causes me huge problems. I only bought this to take with me places where I was worried I'd lose them. Invest in a good American pair that's not going to do that to you because it's worth the extra five or ten bucks, okay? All right, so we've been through consumables and things like that. Let's talk about safety. The most important thing you can do is protect your eyes, okay? Now, if you buy this power MIG, if you get one of these uh, all the way through March of 2014, they have a rebate. You either get $100 off or they send you this bag full of goodies. And this came with mine. This is the 35, 3350 series welding mask. Now, I want you to notice it has a big, beautiful face uh, shield here. This is an auto darkening helmet. So when I turn it on, I can actually see through the helmet. But when the welding starts, it darkens to protect your eyes. This one is capable of many different shades. You'll see it can either be shade 6 through 9 or 9 through 13, and then we, we adjust it. That is because for different power levels and different welding processes, we have to have different darknesses. This is very important. This one also has four different sensors. You can see them right there. There's a little sensor there, there, and a couple down here, and it's got a solar panel down there that charges the batteries. But those four sensors are all looking for a weld spark so that the minute it's detected, this thing darkens, protects your eyes. Very, very important. Beautiful, wonderful mask. Highly recommended. Love it. Now, what I also like is I like these masks from Save Face. Now this is my kind of really highly customized one. You'll see it's got a custom paint job on it. But what's cool about these is a much smaller auto darkening area. You see, compare the two. I mean, there's no comparison. It's, it's one third or something of that. But all of this black part right here is actually um, see-through, it's just welding helmet kind of see-through. So it is 180 degrees, but only part of it can you see when you're not welding. Um, but 
God, they're cool looking, aren't they? So those are great. If you had to go the complete opposite end, you could get a cheap Chinese one from Harbor Freight. Uh, the, the Lincoln Electric one is about 225, or like I say, get it in the rebate kit. It's w a, a much better deal, it's, it's, it's way better. But these are like 50 bucks, okay? Now look at the difference in the field of view. Here you have this tiny little screen, and here you got this big screen. Not to mention, there's only two sensors on this one versus four on this one. It's just a better helmet, protect your eyes. This one also doesn't have the same range. I mean, it's not even adjustable, it, it, it really sucks. Okay, so protect your eyes, get a good helmet. Those are the helmet options. Now, one last thing, let's talk about a jacket because you get radiation coming out of the material that you're welding and that will give you sunburn. You'll get weld burn all over your arms, your chest, your neck. It's terrible. So we have to wear a jacket, something with long sleeves. This one from Lincoln Electric is nice because it has two different types of material. For the arms, the sleeves, they're leather. That way when I'm working right by the material and things are splattering, it's much tougher. But the part on the back and the front is cotton, which means that it's, it's lighter and cooler when you're in a you know, warm environment, okay? It's a good looking jacket, I like it, they fit nicely, I recommend it. If you're looking for something for uh, a, a more you know, heavy duty welding, or in an environment that's colder. I really like this jacket. It's made by Cayman. It is all leather, but it's actually pig skin slash boar skin leather. Notice the interior is lined like a fine men's jacket, the top and the, and the sleeves. So that way, if I have long sleeves on like this and I put them in, it slides in better. And the whole thing is leather and it's black, which is hard to find because most of these are gonna be brown. Okay, I could go on all day with these things, but that's most of what you need. Oh, gloves, thank you for the reminder. We do need gloves. You gotta protect your hands, your eyes, and your jacket. So these are some Lincoln Electric gloves. Um, these are the shorter kind. There are shorter ones and then there's longer ones. If you're going to wear the shorter ones like this, you have to make sure that your sleeves are going to cover that area in between. So this works, but this would not. I would have a sunburn right there, so you get the longer ones for that. But what you need to look for in the gloves is something that's really soft leather. That way I can grip and move my hands freely without feeling like they're constricted and I can't hold my work materials. Okay, did I forget anything else, Dave? Ah, you're one step ahead of me. Okay, the last thing. Of all the accessories that you absolutely have to have, you need a good angle grinder. You don't need a, one of those cheap, crappy ones because there's all kinds of reasons. I could go on about why. Get yourself a good DeWalt. I really like these. This particular one, you see I got a whole bucket of them here, but I've got many of these. This is a good one because the way you trigger it is you just squeeze the little latch and you pull. When, you, when you're holding it, it starts, and when you let go, it stops. So you need a good one because whatever you weld, oftentimes you're gonna to need to grind the weld away for either aesthetic reasons or to inspect the weld to make sure it's fully welded. So get you one of these, and then you gotta get these flap discs. You're gonna hate flap discs by the time I'm done with you because these things are expensive, okay? There's two different kinds. You can either get these really cheap ones, which uh, they look the same. You could buy these, like this is a no-name Chinese brand, um, but you get like five of them for 10 bucks, or you can get the good DeWalt ones, which are like five or six bucks each, okay? Um, and really, they kind of appear the same, except you'll notice these are much denser than these, and these last much longer, but these are really cheap, these are really expensive. You can't win. You've got to spend a lot of money on flat discs. Get used to it. I got a whole shelf full of them up there, so uh, what can I say? All right, guys, that is going to get you started with welding in general. Get your Power MIG 180, get your grinder, get your protective gear, consumables, and go to town, okay? 
I'm here for you. If you have any questions, tweet them at me, leave them in the comments, drop them on the uh, website. And that's it for this episode of Geek Beat. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thumbs up. I'll see you later. I got to get to welding.